Thrips management, no silver bullets, a lot of synthetics, and marginal control at best. Started using it in our A ranges, which has stock plants amongst new production coming out of, out of south production. In the wintertime, our pressure from outside is essentially nil. Illinois weather, you know, helps that. So looking at no-fi and biological control, you know, looking at a preventative or a holistic approach. So we took the new product and started using it in our range A1 through 8 and had great success. Being an annual grower, looking at virus as, or virus potential, taking it seriously. If you can't control your thrips in the winter time, once spring comes, uh, you know, it sort of compounds itself. But you know, in those greenhouses, being foliage stock and some other products, there are mealybugs, aphids do pop up. So, you know, but our number one concern is primarily thrips. No fly pretty much kept most of our counts either zero or say the, the five uh, number count. You know, we do 24 hour averages. Basically, once you see an increase, typically it's not in-house population, it's usually outside being pulled in. But even when we saw a slight increase in pressure, we had uh, stabilized, you know, thrips numbers or decreased on average. Yeah, I think no fly definitely is part of the arsenal. You know, you gotta start early and often. Rogue crops, look at the sticky cards, but you know, having an organism like Pacillomyces definitely is, should be an integrated part of one's tool belt. The idea of curative versus preventative, and you know, the biological approach is a numbers game, and you know, we're making a best guess at it, and so early, often, and using you know, products like NoFly definitely contributed to our success, most definitely.